Hi class, we're back with part two of our special sense lecture. In this lecture, we're going to be covering the chemo senses. So let's get started. <clears throat> so the chemical senses or chemo senses are our sense of smell and taste. So smell is called olfaction and taste is called gustation. They are complementary senses and they let us know whether a substance should be savored or avoided. Chemoreceptors are used by these systems. And in order for a chemoreceptor to pick up some sort of stimuli, the stimuli must be a chemical that is dissolved in water. And then the solution must be either um, in the nasal fluids for our sense of smell or our taste, um, or saliva for the sense of taste. So let's start with the sense of smell or olfaction. Our olfactory receptors <clears throat> are found in the olfactory epithelium. This is our organ of smell. It's located in the roof of our nasal cavity and covers the superior nasal concha. In this, we have the olfactory sensory neurons. If we look at this picture, we see our nasal cavity here. So air is going to be breathed in. Those chemicals in the air can then be dissolved in our nasal mucosa or our mucus there. And then we see up here, we have um, the olfactory bulb, the olfactory tract, which leads into our brain. And we have this area called the olfactory epithelium. Olfactory neurons are bipolar neurons, just like the ones that we saw in the retina. They have olfactory cilia, which radi radiate from the knob. It's covered in mucus, which is the solvent for dissolving our odorants. Bundles of axons of the olfactory receptor cells gather into fascicles that make up the olfactory nerve, our cranial nerve number one. Olfactory neurons, unlike other neurons, have stem cells. This allows them to give rise to new neurons every 30 to 60 days. Okay, so let's look at, have a close up of this olfactory epithelium. So remember, we have our cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone. Through that, we have the cribiform foramina, which are the holes. And we have these olfactory neurons that are going to cross through this. <clears throat> so if we start at the bottom here, this is where the mucus is, and we have olfactory cilia at the base of these, um, these, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> at the base of these bipolar neurons, okay? So these bipolar neur neurons are going to pass through this olfactory epithelium, um, and then they're going to be bundled into fascicles, and then they pass through the cribiform plate of the ethmoid bone, and then they synapse at a place called the glomeruli. The glomeruli is just the synapse between the bipolar cell and then the mitral cell, okay? And this big yellow area is part of the olfactory bulb. You should remember that from the base of the, or the underside of the skull. Or, I'm sorry, I just said that wrong. The underside of the brain when they did the brain dissection. So we have these bipolar neurons which cross through, synapse at the glomeruli with a mitral cell. The mitral cells all come together. They form the olfactory tract, which leads into the brain. All right, so the specificity of these olfactory receptors. One smell can contain hundreds of different odorants. Humans have about 400 smell genes that are active in our nose, and each one encodes a unique receptor protein. A protein responds to one or more odors. Pain and temperature receptors are also found in the nasal cavities, and they respond to irritants like ammonia or can smell hot and cold, like a chili pepper smells hot and menthol smells cold. In order to smell something, the substance first must be in a gaseous state. Then that gaseous state has to be able to dissolve in the olfactory epithelial fluid. We then have to activate the olfactory sensory neurons. <clears throat> the dissolved odorants bind to the receptor proteins in the olfactory cilium membranes. 
when it reaches a threshold, an action potential is conducted to the first relay station in the olfactory bulb. That's the glomeruli. Olfactory adaptation. When people are exposed to a certain smell for a period of time, we do not smell it. So think about when you put on perfume in the morning, you smell it, and then by the time you're getting into your car, you usually can't even smell it because you're constantly being exposed to that odor. And basically, the olfactory sensory neurons or the receptors turn off. Okay? So this is called olfactory adaptation. The olfactory pathway. So from those um, bipolar neurons, they synapse with the mitral cells at the glomeruli. The mitral cells then travel via the olfactory tracts to the olfactory cortex in the brain. This is where the smell is consciously interpreted and identified. Some information is used by our emotional brain and our memories. So that information is sent to the hypothalamus, the amygdala, and other regions of the limbic system. This is how we get an emotional response to odor. Okay, our second chemo sense that we need to speak about is the sense of taste or gustation. So we have um, taste buds. Taste buds are sensory organs for taste. Most of the 10,000 taste buds are located on our tongue in structures called papillae. Papillae are peg-like projections on the tongues and mucosa. And there are four types of papillae, but only three of them hold the taste buds. So you should know the four types and what, where they're located. So we have fungiform papillae, and these are the top, um, they're scattered all over the tongue. They house most of our taste buds. We have foliate papillae. Those are found on the side walls of the tongue, and they also have the um, taste buds. And valate papillae, or circumvallate papillae, they, they can be named either way. They are the largest taste buds, and there's eight to 12 of these that form a V in the back of your tongue. And then we have filiform papillae, which do not have our taste buds. <clears throat> they are used to increase friction so that we're able to move the food around in our mouth. Here's a diagram of, our, of a tongue. On it, we see all of these dots all over. These are the fungiform papillae where most of our taste buds are found. And that is not a taste bud. It's a structure in, into which we see the taste buds. And we'll see a close-up of that in a little bit. Foliate papillae are found on the sides of the tongue. And then the valate papillae or the circumvallate papillae form this B in the back. The filiform papillae do not have taste buds and they're not shown on this. So each taste bud consists of 50 to 100 flask-shaped epithelial cells of two types. We have gustatory epithelial cells, and these are taste receptor cells that have hairs on them that project into the taste pores. They are all bathed in saliva. The neurons are coiled around the gustatory epithelial cells and they send taste signals to the brain. And then we have the basal epithelial cells, which are stem cells. They divide every seven to 10 days and we get more gustatory epithelial cells. So let me show you a picture of this. Let me see something real quick. All right, so <clears throat> when we look down into a taste bud, we then have, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. When we look down into a papillae, we will see several of these taste buds. Okay, hold on one second, and I'm going to see if I can pull up something. Oops. Um, doesn't look like I'm doing this very well. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, let me see a new share. All right, let me try to draw this. This might be the fastest way. So on our tongue, this is the surface of our tongue. Say we get a papillae. Okay, remember we have the fungiform papillae. We have all these different type of papillae. The papillae itself is going to have a crater-like structure, okay? If we look along the sides of these, we're gonna see all of these taste pores, okay? 
And I apologize for this drawing. I'm using my mouse because I don't have um, anything else. But just pretend there's a whole bunch of these, okay? All around here and here and here and here and here, okay? Now we're going to look at one of these taste buds, okay? The taste portal. This whole thing is a papillae. Inside the papillae, we have all of these taste buds, okay? All right. That's what I wanted to show you. <laughs> In some of the histological slides that we have on the uh, slides, um, oh my goodness, I'm losing my train of thought. On the slides padlet, you can see a picture um, of a slide that is that shows like this much. Okay, so you'll see a few of them on there, and then we have them closer up where we just see the ones. Okay. All right. So back to the lecture. So here, this is like going down into that, the big papillae, and in it, we see a taste bud, okay? This taste bud, when we zoom in on it, it has a little pore, and then it has this area that's filled with these purple cells. These purple cells have little hairs at the ends. These are called gustatory hair cells. There's also some blue cells, and those are our basal epithelial cells. So how this works is that on our tongue, some saliva with the chemicals dissolved in it, so whatever you ate, it's dissolved in it, is going to come and fill this papillae. Some of that saliva with the dissolved chemical will enter the taste pore, okay, because there's a little hole there, and it's going to activate these gustatory hair cells, okay? They're going to cause, um, an activation of these different neurons. So remember when we learned the cranial nerves, we had a few different cranial nerves that allowed us to taste, depending on where on the tongue or into the pharynx they were located, okay? So here's a slide view, a histological slide view, and you can see one of these taste buds, taste poor, gustatory hair cells, and then they're saying that this is a basal um, epithelial cell. So remember, these are going to divide, these blue ones are going to divide every seven to 10 days and we get new um, gustatory hair cells, okay? All right, so there are five basic tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. So sweet is like sugar, sour, think of Sour Patch Kids, salty, you guys know what salt is, bitter is like aspirin or caffeine or nicotine, and then this one, umami, um, sometimes people haven't heard of this. This is like a savory type of a taste. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, like beef or cheese. So these are our five basic taste sensations. In order for us to taste a chemical, it must first be dissolved in saliva, then it must diffuse into a taste pour, and then come in contact with a gustatory hair. The binding of the food chemical to that gustatory receptor um, causes the gustatory epithelial cell to create an electrical impulse. Different gustatory cells have different thresholds for activation. The bitter receptors are the most sensitive. And if you were in class, I would ask you, why do you think that is? Why do you think the bitter ones are the most sensitive? Well, it is because those could be ones that were poisonous to us. So poisons probably are more likely to have the bitter, um, or to activate the bitter sensory um, taste receptors. All of our um, receptors adapt in three to five seconds with complete adaptation in one to five minutes. So I mentioned that there are a few different cranial nerves that allow us to taste depending on where um, on the tongue we have the chemical. So the main ones are the facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, and that carries impulses from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Glossopharyngeal nerve is cranial nerve nine. It carries impulses from the posterior one-third as well as the pharynx. And then the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, transmits from the epiglottis and the lower pharynx. So these Ner uh, nerves, cranial nerves, synapse at the medulla, and then they travel to the thalamus, which then goes to the gustatory cortex and the insula. The hypothalamus and limbic system are also involved, and that allows us to 
determine the appreciation for a taste of something. So an emotional connection there. Here it just shows the three different cranial nerves bringing information to the medulla, which goes to the thalamus, which then goes to the, the gustatory cortex. So that's the pathway. There are important roles of taste and they involve triggering reflexes involved in digestion, such as once we taste something in our mouth, we have increased salivation. And then we also even start the secretion of gastric juices in our stomach. Taste also may initiate protective reactions like gagging or reflexive vomiting. Taste is 80% smell. So if our nose is blocked, then foods taste bland. Our mouth also has thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, and nociceptors. The temperature and taste enhance or detract from our taste. I'm sorry, the temperature and texture can either enhance or detract from taste. So that's something to keep in mind when you come across patients who have to have um, a full liquid diet. They have to have their, um, their meals just ground up or blended up. That's not going to make them want to eat more ground up um, meatloaf, say. So it can that texture can really detract from the taste. Spicy hot foods can excite pain receptors in the mouth, which some people experience as pleasure. Okay, and that concludes our second part of the um, special senses. And we are going to finish up with... Well, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. And we're gonna finish up with the ear and the third part.